Hey guys, let's get more news about Dallas, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Cowboys news, Dallas Dak Prescott no longer wearing walking boot according to source. No need to press the panic button regarding Dak Prescott's apparent foot injury, he'll be okay. Dallas Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott recently suffered a minor right foot sprain that temporarily required a walking boot, a source told ESPN's Todd Archer. Prescott was seen in a walking boot while on vacation in Cabo San Lucas in a picture posted to X on Wednesday. It was unclear when the picture was taken, and he is no longer wearing the boot, according to the source. The injury is not expected to impact Prescott when the Cowboys hold their first training camp practice on July 25. It is not known how Prescott suffered the injury. The Cowboys last held an organized workout on June 5. Will Nathaniel Pete earn his spot on the Dallas Cowboys roster at training camp? How he got here, Pete is a product of spending his final two seasons in the SEC, prepping for the next level, after transferring to Missouri following three seasons at Stanford. His two seasons in Mizzou yielded 176 carries for 755 rushing yards and five touchdowns along with 147 receiving yards and two receiving touchdowns on 16 receptions in a total of 24 games played, also putting his ability to return kicks on display as well. At Stanford, he was a two-time winner of the Phil Moffat Award, granted to the team's most outstanding special teams player in any given season. That goes to his ability to provide value to the Cowboys in multiple ways, and that's why he found himself receiving a call from several teams as an undrafted free agent before opting to join the Cowboys. What's next? Needing to find a way to make waves in Oxnard, Pete enters a room of running backs that varies between seasoned and proven veterans like Ezekiel Elliott to inexperienced players with strong potential, and his speed will be key in helping to separate him from the pack early on. The same will be true of his ability to catch the ball out of the backfield and to take special teams reps when called upon, though few of those will be as a returner. There are far too many bodies on the RB's depth chart to consider not literally having the count at the end of August, so Pete needs to stand out from day one, and every day thereafter, and his skill set gives him a more than solid chance at doing exactly that. DallasCowboys.com writers provide their expectations for Ezekiel Elliott in his return to Dallas. Kyle Eumanns, Zeke completed seven seasons in Dallas, surpassing 875 rushing yards and at least eight total touchdowns in every one of them. At this point in his career, this may be the ceiling for his statistical contribution. He'll most likely be used as a short yardage and pass protecting back to start out, with the opportunity to earn more consistent carries as the season continues especially if he proves his fitness and durability, can last deep into the long NFL season. Last season in New England, he proved he can still pass block at an elite level and produce in the red zone. Both elements that Dallas is hungry for in their offensive scheme. Nick Eatman, I think fantasy football players are going to have a hard time with Zeke this year. If I had to guess, he'll be someone on a roster in every league, but a week-to-week -week call on starting him. I know that doesn't answer the question, but my point is that I think he'll have some very productive weeks, especially down in the red zone because he'll be a good short yardage option. I think Zeke might score anywhere from 7 to 10 touchdowns this season. That doesn't mean he will rack up a ton of yards because they will rotate the backs, something that should make him more effective. I could see him finishing somewhere around 600 to 800 rushing yards and maybe 25 to 30 catches out of the backfield. A 1,000-yard all-purpose yard season would be a good year for him, as long as the committee is also putting in some work as well. What should Houston Texan fans be rooting for in these NFL QB contract standoffs? The Houston Texans have lived a pretty charmed life the last couple off-seasons. In 2023, the draft brought us C.J. Stroud and Will Anderson as the future saviors of the organization, and possibly the city itself. In 2024, the Texans went ultra-aggressive in free agency and in trades, and landed Stefan Diggs, Joe Mixon, and Danielle Hunter, among others. 
along the way, there was almost no contractual drama. The one big extension handed out, which was to wide receiver Nico Collins, came with zero dark clouds or social media salvos needed. It was just your standard, quietly negotiated $72 million contract extension. The closest thing to drama the last two years has come from cornerback Steven Nelson, ever the agitator, going after Nick Casario and D'Amico Ryans with personal insults about their attire and appearance. Needless to say, Nelson is gone, someday, the Texans will have off-season drama again. All teams, even the good ones do. I might even say, especially the good ones do. The Cowboys, Packers, and Dolphins are all good NFL teams, and all three have high drama going on with their starting quarterbacks right now, as all three signal callers are looking for massive new contract extensions. As we outlined last week, the average at-best Jaguars QB, Trevor Lawrence, just secured a contract that ties for the highest average annual value in the league, at $55 million. I would submit that the three quarterbacks we were referring to above, Dak Prescott of the Cowboys, Jordan Love of the Packers, and Tua Tagovailoa of the Dolphins, are all better, more productive players than Lawrence. Prescott and Love, for sure. Is Cowboys Dak Prescott dealing with injury to repaired foot? Eyebrows were raised when a photo recently shared on social media showed Dallas Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott wearing a protective boot on his right foot. Calvin Watkins of the Dallas Morning News revealed on Thursday afternoon that Prescott is dealing with a foot sprain that isn't serious. Watkins added that Prescott has worn the boot for a week. It's unclear when and how Prescott suffered this setback, as Dallas' two-day mandatory minicamp wrapped up on June 5. As of Thursday afternoon, it also wasn't known if Prescott will be slowed down in any way when the Cowboys hold their first training camp practice on July 25. The health of Prescott's right foot this summer is noteworthy for multiple reasons. He famously went down with a gruesome compound fracture and dislocation of his right ankle in October 2020. While Watkins mentioned that Prescott hasn't endured a second known injury to that foot-slash-ankle since he had surgery, Josh Alper of Pro Football Talk noted that the 30-year-old missed one game in the fall of 2021 because of a right calf problem. More importantly, Prescott is in the final year of a contract that includes a no-tag clause. There's no sign the two sides are close to coming to terms on any type of extension, but Watkins insisted that Thursday's update doesn't appear to impede any progress regarding negotiations. Prescott likely won't see many, if any, preseason snaps even if he's fully healthy come August, but his status could become an interesting topic if his foot sprain opens the door for 24-year-old signal caller Trey Lance to get some work with the first-team offense. Whispers have emerged suggesting at least some within the Cowboys want to see how Lance has developed since Dallas acquired the third overall pick of the 2021 draft from the San Francisco 49ers last summer. Lance hasn't yet cemented himself as Dallas full-time QB2 ahead of Cooper Rush, but logic suggests that Cowboys owner and general manager Jerry Jones will want the former San Francisco starter to play early and often in upcoming exhibition games. With that said, Jones seemingly is counting on Prescott to be good to go for the Week 1 matchup at the Cleveland Browns on September 8. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Dak Prescott? Leave your opinion in the comments.